Hello and welcome to Morning Kickoff. My name is Dean Williams and with me today I have got the oldest podcaster in the world and that is official. Gaza, freshly dug up this morning, smelling of roses because that's where he was buried last. Uh, and also we have got Sorin from Albania and we've got Oily Maguire, Mr. Solomon. Hello, you alright? Hello, I am. Good evening. Good morning. It's the morning kickoff show. We're doing this live <laughs> Saturday morning, ready for you. He's still getting used to the to the time. <laughs> well, it was it was that late when you got me up, so you know. <laughs> right, lads, here's what's coming up on today's show. Yeah, he's, he's on he's, fire. He's really good. He's in a he? shit league for fuck's sake. <laughs> he should be on fire. He's like playing Groomsby every week. <laughs> You know something is really bad at Man United because Sorin is not supporting them. That's true. true. Yeah. yeah. That was the difference. He was what? He was fucking 89 year old grandma. <laughs> Isn't that right, Gaza? Yeah, yes, mate. Yeah. yeah. Well, that wasn't in the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get on to the shout outs? I shall go first because I've got quite a lot. First shout out is going to Pat Cottrell and Al, Ian Lane of Eastley, Damien Stephen. John Malarkey has got a clothing range that he would like me to promote. So John, who has put on the website, not a football team, but I've set up a sports clothing brand. Would appreciate it if you had the chance to check out the website and possibly a shout out. It is Boar, B-O-A-R, hyphen wild lazy strong dot t mill dot com and that's t w -E m i w -L, l dot com go and have a look sports brand apparently next shout out is steve morris roy munson of grimsby turner reynolds Squidman, who's doing a hundred press ups a day for cancer research i believe stevie pexman who i was away with just the other week auntie sean and uncle gary gary put his hand up then <laughs> i won't say who <laughs> but i did hear a little shriek from sorry <laughs> who's got some shout out lads so we got some shout outs so well shout -out. I, I did have but you've uh, stole it for me it was going to be squid with his charity push-ups 100 a day go to his just giving page uh, he's got a target of 300 and I think he's on 240 at the moment so sorry well I'd like to shout out Dino Gary Joe Squidman and hang on Turner. a minute we can't just all do shout outs to the same people I have to the reason is because I've been going through a really bad period in my life and you guys are you one of these new women N not yet that have I'm, a I'm, cock no I'm not I, I well, wanted to go to Thailand but I had to postpone that but getting back to it thank you so much for uh, supporting me to become a woman with a cock yeah and also, you're one of these newfound women <laughs> yes sir and being there for me I really appreciate it you guys have been amazing and I am truly honored to be your friend also shout out to my brother my youngest brother Valentine who is Romanian and he's also listening to the podcast very good cool does he know the Romanian national anthem <laughs> yeah yeah he knows that no he probably doesn't know it they don't they don't right. sing it in school let anymore. me just stop this right now Ollie who have you got uh, I've only got the one shout out um, is that because you got no friends <clears throat> well yeah but, well we discovered last time I got one friend so uh, he's, oh, he's, I can't remember his name Chris, but yeah Chris, Chris he's already had a shout out shout out Chris yeah so he can have another shout out yeah we'll have a shout out to Chris yeah. friend of the show yeah Chris so but my actual shout out um, is to my sister's band because uh, I thought I'd give them a little plug plug away yeah, she's, she's got some gigs coming up. So they're called Shotgun. Uh, they kind of tour around West Sussex. Um, they, they're like a rock band, basically. They sing like uh, all the classic ACDC rock songs and they go around to all the pubs and uh, do nights, basically, for there. So their next show is on the 11th of November at the QE2 in Bogner. So if you are a Bogner local listening to the podcast, head down to the QE2 on the 11th and check them out because they are awesome. One of my friends three weeks ago took his life. His name, Robert Portlock, known as a tree ball. I grew up with him in Grimsby, going to football, playing football, all kinds of things. Football. Paul Dayton has 
with the help of Rob Mackey, managed to finish off a classic piano house track that Treeball wanted to, to do and was trying to do with Paul Dayton. Now, all proceeds will go to the charity chosen by Rob's family, and that's Andy's Man Club, Grimsby. Uh, we've talked about this, haven't we, Gazza, on one of the other yeah. podcasts. They do fantastic things for men who just go down to a centre to talk to people that are, have been in situations where they just need to to be listened to to talk and just get things off the chest this song paul dayton has got listed on spotify and apple music you can search for it anyway the vocals on it are hannah huxford rob mackey came up with the lyrics and it is back to venus music is the love tree balls theme now you can get this on Apple uh, or Spotify. Every time you download it, some money's going to be made and it's all going to go to Andy's Man Club. I might even be using it in the background music right now if I get the permissions required. Go listen to it. It's for a worthwhile cause. Some man talk. Listen on Morning Kickoff Footy Podcast. Right, guys, are we going to go on to the games played over the weekend? Yeah, when I read out the result, say, like, for the first game, do you want to talk about that game or should I just go through the whole... If it's of interest, if anyone's got an opinion. Yeah, OK. All right, well, we'll start with the earlier kickoff, which was uh, Fulham nil, Man United 1. That was a terrible game. Yeah. Absolute terrible game. Man United, I watched, and it's just like a team of misfits. No other way to say it, a team of misfits. How Fulham didn't go 2 nil up I don't know William smashed one hit the post I think and then the keeper saved another one should have should have gone up 2 nil up Fulham I think that's the response as well after the game by United they were so focused on Bruno Fernandes getting that goal and he's our captain and all this nonsense yeah the week before there was all having a go at him because he's waving his arms about and prodding and poking yeah. people but actually the bigger picture is United just aren't good enough you know, no. I listen to all the pundits everything like that and United just are a mid-table side at the moment and they just don't accept it every single fan goes oh it's not what United are it's not what you know we're better than this we're better than that actually you're not uh, you've got to come back and do more and uh, yeah I just thought afterwards they won 1-0 scraped the win and the whole thing was just about how Bruno Fernandes got a goal well let's wait and see what happens this weekend because at the moment I don't think United win two on the bounce mm, Luton at home well, Luton at home maybe no, Luton did one all against Liverpool, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, they did, yeah. And, yeah, United are in all sorts of... Tra- I mean, the ground's falling apart, isn't it? They're talking about taking the Rugby Cup final away and taking it to City's ground now because of the facilities and the state of the stadium. You know something is really bad at Man United because Sorin is not supporting them. That's true. True. Yeah. yeah. As I've said it in uh, one of the previous podcasts, I don't think he's got a team behind him. There's still trouble in the locker room. I think they need to rebuild, as Oli is saying. I think they need to accept that they're a mid-table t- mid team instead of just talking about oh, they're united and they deserve to be up top they need to put their heads down and get to work try to get some of the youngsters in instead of just buying stupid people stupid players like Amrabat it doesn't make any sense he, he doesn't do anything it just feels like such a stupid stupid purchase I feel like they should just try to give some of the younger chaps a try and um, rebuild that's what they need to do and they need to get the Glazers out because it's just a commercial club at this point and in a ton of debt as well yeah I quite like it if it is actually <laughs> it is fun to watch I mean yeah I don't enjoy it you know I don't like United so I like to them lose Definitely. actually on the Glazers thing just one thought I might mention this so I heard something the other day so they didn't sell their shares did they they kept hold of their shares and kept Jim Ratcliffe has got 25 going in for 25% for, which is for, all for, they want to give up for billions right do you agree that they kept their shares because if we get rid of the 3 o'clock water shed uh, you know you can't watch games basically at 3 o'clock what's that called um just the watershed. Watershed, just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If they get rid of that, they're then, not going to. They voted on it. But if they did, United share price because a Premier League app would then play all the games. United share price would go through the roof, and that's why they don't want to get rid of the club because it could. Oh, it's a cash cow, isn't it? Yeah, but it could go. They've just levied a load of load of debt against it. 
managed to take a load of money out from the commercial revenue and now there's no money in the bank mm. and you don't have to listen to Gary Neville what he says yeah oh yeah I mean yeah, he, he's sick of the glazers isn't he but mm. what I heard was that they'd get rid of the three o'clock if they ever did which it could go that way it could even the, the championship going down they voted against it as well because they don't think they'll get fans going into the for exactly the that game. reason yeah. I don't know I don't know if that would happen oh, it's hard enough getting tickets for games anyway I had a ticket for Slough and I stayed in and watched it on TV because you couldn't be bothered to go no I had to stay back because of the dogs and the missus was out on a five and drive without, without the five yeah without the five <laughs> just the drive when you can just watch games like Oh, it, although it's great that I was in Stockport watching Grimsby lose, when you can just sit in your room and pay to watch it, I just think it's convenient, isn't it? It's like internet shopping. I don't even know the last time I went into a shop to try anything on. I just buy off the website. What do you two think? If you could go to the games or watch them all at home, would you stay at home? Or would you go to the games? I would watch 75% at home. Probably the same, especially now that ticket prices have gone up a lot. I just feel like, realistically, it's not possible to just go and watch the games very often so you'd be once in a while anyways me personally I, I love the atmosphere and going to games just a shit place to get to Tottenham anyway from where where I am so I'm quite happy to watch it at second best watch it yeah on TV and just go and watch some local football anyway back to the results at the weekend uh, the next one was um, London Derby Brentford 3 West Ham 2 oh I didn't see that yeah I didn't so. see that one coming at all no, no. Good win for Brentford, actually. Um, no, it was. I think the last time I saw it, it was on a draw. And then we go to a Burnley nil, Palace 2. Although Burnley did really well last year, that's three points, you've got to think. Luton, Sheffield United and Burnley's three points. Whenever you play them, you've got to be three points. Yeah. You know? Are they favourites to go down now, Burnley? I watch them and think... Well, I think it's they're just, just Luton. They're just not there. Yeah, company's going to get sacked, I think even though he did what he did in the championship to bring him up. Mm. He's on the cusp. He's got to be one of the first one's favourites to go next, isn't he? Won one, drawn one, lost nine, Burnley. And exactly the same for Sheffield United. Mm. Uh, Bournemouth won one, drawn three, lost seven. Luton won one, drawn three, lost seven. Everton won three, drawn two, lost six. Talking about your favourite team, Everton, the next one was actually Everton won, Brighton won, which... Unbelievable. Good, good point for... Good point for Everton, that. Definitely. I think that's a strong point. That's a point gained against mm. Brighton. Yeah. 75% of the time, they would win a match. Yeah. A bit poor form at the moment, though, Brighton. Yeah, they seem yeah. to have just dropped their levels mm. a little bit. Whether it's a European adventure, I don't know. Probably they're getting... getting it's getting to them. Sorry, I was actually going to say, maybe the players are starting to get a bit tired. You always find that, though. Anyone who goes into Europe for the first year... The amount of league games, then the cup games, then the European games, it takes its toll on inexperienced yeah. and smaller it's squads. <laughs> because my pal died who supported West Ham, I'm not going to say anything derogatory about West Ham today. And I think it's a lovely cup what they won. <laughs> <laughs> you have changed. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Next one. Uh, Sorens City 6, Bournemouth 1. Really happy with that. I'm really, really happy with Toku. He is turning out to be an amazing player. Obviously, he, he was good. They knew what, would do, what they were doing with him, but he is really unleashing, especially against a really small sort of side or team like uh, Bournemouth. He really gets the chance to show what he can do, and hopefully they'll, they'll give him more leeway. He's already making the team often, so I am really happy about him. Holland looks like he's getting back on form, he's starting to score again. Did he get did he get did he get a knock? Sorry? Did he get did he got taken off, did he? Um Did he get injured? No. No, I don't think so. No. No. I think he's he's getting back on form, which is good. Um I really want him to show we're gonna talk about this later, but I really want him to prove everyone wrong regarding the Ballon d'Or. I think this is the perfect time for him to, to get back in form. Okay, moving on. Um, Sheffield United 2, Wolves 1. So that was Sheffield's first win of the season. Uh, yeah. That, in, injury time penalty. I saw Wolves versus Liverpool and they were one nil up. And to me, they look quite a decent team. Yeah. But they're, again, just not doing it, are they? No. They've not kicked on at all. No, no. Newcastle 1, Arsenal 0. Or... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... Knowledge. Gary Neville did a piece on Sky Sports where he took the ball 
and put it at the corner mm. exactly where it's still in, but then invited the cameras to get different angles. I got what they were saying. Arteta, to me, is off his nut. What I can't understand, what I can't get my head around is there's no better angle than what was mm. at Newcastle. Mm. How has that How has that been allowed? Everywhere else, it's goal line camera. Mm. But for whatever reason, they can't see. And like you said, they don't have a camera angle in that. That's mental. They should have something above, shouldn't they? Like a bird's eye yeah. view or something. Yeah. They can send a camera. You know when you see at the beginning of the game, you see that camera that flies across yeah. the middle of the pit? Yeah, but that's not allowed to be used for technology, is it? I mean, come on. Just start using the right things. I just assumed that every ground in the Premier League has that technology where it looks dead straight down the goal line. Mm. For some reason, Newcastle yeah. doesn't send James, does it? I'm an Arsenal fan, so I don't think it should have been a goal. I think Gabriel was pushed. Yeah, I think that was three. The three they were talking about. That, that was, was the, that was the one. Them. They were going on about an offside yeah. where they had to get a ref in to explain that if the def- goalkeeper's in front of the last defender, then the defender becomes the last man, something along those lines. So, but I don't think Gordon was offside. But I think the foul from Joel Linton on Gabriel yeah, was, was, yeah. was a push. And, and, and yeah. refs have been on Sky Sports, TalkSport, and all sorts of saying it was a foul. So it's one of those games you had Liverpool having it the other week mm. and United had that ball that went out that didn't go out that was out uh, the week before so it's constant at the moment it's, what really, about, it's, it's really weird because you're talking about referees and you know and in the LB4 bar everybody was moaning about the decisions the, you know how they got them they always just showed them on the telly afterwards oh that was wrong that was wrong and now we've got the technology and we're still talking about the same things mm. it's just mad what about Havertz in his uh, tackle? Do you think that was a red card? Yeah, yeah, I'd Thanks. say that was reckless and he should have been sent off. And I think um, uh, Bruno Gumierrez yeah. punched Bumarai. Jorginho in the back of the head and he should have been sent off. Um, there's so much technology they could go and look at these things and they don't, but VAR's got a long way to go before it's going to be perfect and these yeah, things are going to happen over and over again. In its early days, if you think about it, look at it five years from now and it's going to be a lot different but they've got to do it quicker it's it's taking too long still yeah yeah that's the problem but why can't they just say to the referee go and have a look at it yourself and let him still make the decision yeah because they're taking everything away from the referee when it's not supposed to be like well they make the decision they know that they're right and then they send it to the monitor for the referee to look at and 99% of the time when they go to the monitor you know the ref is either going to give a pen or not or go against what the initial decision was Mm. yeah Um, like Gary said why don't just send him over to the monitor and let him look yeah Yeah. right we've got three more to get through Um, next one is Boris 2 Villa nil Um, that's a surprise to me that's a good three points for Forest but the way that Villa are set out I wouldn't expect them, Brighton, to be losing against the likes of Sheffield United, Burnley, Luton, Bournemouth. Yeah. You know what I mean? These these are good teams now. Good teams. Yeah. Different. To play different. This is when an accumulator gets difficult to put together, doesn't it? Because I would have backed Villa all, yeah, all day long. The game and then just crazy things happen. So, mm. yeah, Ollie Watkins was on fire. Can't get himself a goal in that game against Nottingham Forest, but will bang in three against someone else. So... Yeah, who knows what happened there. It was probably the crazy game of the weekend, I think. Mm. No, I think the crazy game of the weekend was Chelsea and Spurs. Yeah, we'll come on to that. Without a shadow of a doubt, but we'll come on to that in a bit. Um, The next one's a shock as well. was Luton 1, Liverpool 1. Um, Liverpool last minute goal Equalizer. yeah that was really crazy was this the game where Darwin Nunes missed a sitter again was yeah but it was one? offside it was offside he was off, well, the header in from Salah and then yeah Nunes. yeah, he, he, yeah, he was offside yeah. they, they, they did say he was offside yeah. but it, it was still unbelievable I saw Salah he was going down he was like he can't oh, believe he missed yeah, yeah. yeah. But he was offside in the end. Yeah, yeah, oh, he, right. he was offside. Yeah, he's a funny player, Darwin Nunes. I don't know what to yeah. make of him at the moment. He's like a coin toss player. Sometimes he will just win you games and yeah. he will just bang in three at a time. Yeah. And other times he will just completely miss every single shot. Yeah. They've had a lot of opportunities in that game, but they, they just couldn't score up until the end. Luis Diaz is really good for him. Obviously, everything he's been through is just good for him to score like that, save the team probably meant a lot for him so it's yeah. really the, the worrying thing about Liverpool is does it take Luis Diaz probably not in the greatest mindset to come on and win you a game that you should be winning yeah. easily without him so what didn't happen against Wolves when they were 1-0 down Klopp threw on 
Darwin Nunes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And Luis Diaz. Yeah. Would you Three would you winners. think of them? Do you think they they've got the they've got what it takes this year to, to win it all? Uh, Liverpool. No. Take no, absolutely no. not. No. Still Man, Man City, I think, uh, uh, way ahead. Yeah, I mean, Kevin De Bruyne is not even playing. They're winning six nil. Yeah, just, it was against. They're the animals, and yeah, just yeah, very very frustrating, especially if you're trying to compete with them for the time yeah. mm. and then we got one more which obviously was last night and I've written Spurs 1 Chelsea 4 what the fuck <laughs> Gaza we'll talk about that later shall we why what do you want to talk about it now well stop your expletives terrible behaviour and language there coming from someone of <laughs> the older generation so, so if you were telling everyone what actually happened like how did the game actually go because uh, first 15 minutes Spurs blew them out of the water they got the first goal first uh, goal in 6 or 7 minutes yeah took them, took them apart um, then Sonny scored marginally offside but it was offside um, that had gone in 2-0 I think that would have been it um, but then then Chelsea started to get a little bit of a foothold and then Ndogi did a two foot challenge which which only got a yellow card because it, yeah, it, it to me Sterling moved out the way and he didn't mm. yeah if Sterling had the move he did, he did he touch him a bit yeah but he, I think Sterling saved him a little bit there because he did yeah. move yeah. to one side saw it coming so yeah he got a yellow for that um, and that seemed to lit the touch paper then and then it got quite competitive and then our dear friend Romero um, went chasing a long ball up front and then he, he was down the ground he kicked out of somebody didn't get nothing happened with that yeah it, um, it wasn't a big kick yeah, but anyway. prior, prior to that Chelsea had two goals disallowed yeah, for offside the two, the two goals disallowed for offside and then Romero gave away a, a penalty straight red um, he won it was the, deserved what do you yeah, think about that yeah he won, he won the ball first but the follow through was nasty um, yeah. yeah deserved red um, and, but the crowd they didn't see that so they all thought he won the ball and so it was a bit of booing and whatever but so down to 10 men so we've taken Brennan Johnson off but Eric Dyer on to be fair he played he did alright I think for his first game uh, won all half time second half in Dogie, stupid challenge on Sterling. He was going away from the goal, red card, and you down to nine men. But we lost Van der Ven through injury. Madison went off injured, so two big players. Um, I think we ended the game out of the eleven starters. Only four finished the game. You did for a split second go two one all, didn't you? With nine men. Yeah. The goal was ruled offside. Yeah. And then we, yeah. Was Dyer, it offside? Dyer, Dyer took his goal really well, didn't he? And, yeah. And then ruled offside. Was it off, that, clear off, clear yeah, offside? Well, yeah, very marginal, but it was offside. That's five disallowed goals. There was, um, what, 21 minutes extra time. Or Chelsea time. were his poor against yeah. nine men. Against but, nine men, you would expect a I, professional side to go in and start punishing six, seven, eight goals. Especially with that high line that Spurs were well, playing. The exactly. looked like they did in the end. No, they, they didn't. Like, they like, didn't. How Chelsea didn't, yeah, like you're saying, it's just a, a, so a late run from the midfield, isn't it? It's all you mm. need, ball through. I mean, the keeper was fantastic, wasn't he? The yeah, keep, keeper saved keep, three keep the sweeper. Yeah, he did, did really, really well. Yeah, the way Chelsea played against nine men Tottenham was disgraceful. Nothing short of disgraceful. That's all the results. Um, and then the Premiership table is looking, obviously, we've got City top now on 27 points, Spurs on 26, Liverpool and Arsenal both on 24, Villa 22 and Newcastle 20. And at the bottom, fourth bottom, obviously Luton with six, Bournemouth third from bottom six, Burnley second to bottom four, and Sheffield United rock bottom with four. And that is your Premier League roundup. Make sure to follow us on Facebook. Follow on Apple Podcasts. Morning kickoff football podcast. Hit subscribe and don't miss the next episode. With you every week. Saturday morning kickoff football podcast. Your host, Dino. Harry Maguire. Oh, yeah, he's back. He's turned the corner. I mean, yeah. scored yeah. a goal. Him and Evans at the back. He'll be captain again soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imagine that. I wouldn't be surprised. A player that was told to leave, a player that turned down West Ham, stayed at Man United. Yeah. I still think he's shit. Yes, he is. I just don't think you can say, I've had one good game, but the other 10 will have scored fucking seven own goals. <laughs> scored mo- more legit own goals <laughs> than fucking Harry Kane. Although he is, I've got, I've got to be honest, I think I saw Harry Kane score actual goals for Bayern. 
Yeah, he's, he's on fire. He's, he's really good. He's, he's in really a good. shit league, for fuck's sake. He shouldn't be on fire. It's like playing Groosby every week. It's like fucking giving candy to a kid. But he's done well against Dortmund, and they're decent. It's they're second trick, best. Isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's doing well, though. He's on for yeah. the golden, but he's going to beat Messi's record or something in Europe. So apparently, that's what he's on for now. Well, he's playing in the fucking... So is Messi, though. German league. Well, yeah. In, Messi's in, play- want- Messi only ever played in Spain, then went to France, now he's in America. Has he come to England and done it? No. If you take away all of Harry Kane's penalties... <laughs> Right, there we go. He yeah, would not be fucking good. up at the top, scoring and beating Rooney and fucking. But that's the thing. Jim man. Greaves he's, and everything he's else. Scores huh? those penalties. It's not like every player. So, there's so many players that miss penalties. To have someone that you can rely on when you really need them to score that penalty, especially. But he doesn't it, score legit goals. It's still. He's a goal, not even man. in a fucking legit league. Yes, it is. If he did it in he the probably, English he Premier League, probably if win he went the Champions League, if he went to Man United, or he, he went did, to he Man did, City, he did do it in the Premier League. Did he fuck? All he did was fucking take penalties and <laughs> shit. I'll send you. I'll send you your goals. He scored for Tottenham. I'll send you. A, uh, I don't ever see him ever <laughs> scoring for England a legit goal. It I would, think it would be nuts if. Tottenham do really well this year. Like the yes, best Son is doing. Is, Son is doing Son, fucking well. And and Kane has gone. That would just be like, well, maybe Dino's got a point. No, but Son no. Son has come into his own, being put up front by uh, and and. Well, it happened when Kane got injured a couple of years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you know what I think? I think if um, Kane went to Grimsby and he started scoring goals, then Dino would be very happy with him. It would definitely change his uh, perspective. But you're talking about a top, alleged caliber <laughs> player. <laughs> but in my that, mind, that is, you'd be scoring goals. You'd be happy with that. Yeah, but listen. In the the reality of it is, for England, he does not score legit goals. That's that's my fucking point. He is not that great. Trust me, he's not that great. He wasn't that great at Spurs. He's still in form. Would and you have prime Rooney or prime Kane? Rooney all day long. Rooney. I'd go Rooney all day long. Probably Rooney, yeah. Who's Fuck you, got then I'll go Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, you're fucking it, it, language it depends is because tonight. It depends because the game was so much different back then when, when Rooney was in his prime. Was it when... fuck different? Yes, it was. How? In what way? Well, they weren't playing the way they are now. didn't have VAR. No. <laughs> no, the, the way they're playing now with high pressing and everything, they weren't playing like that back then. Yeah, that's just the style. Styles come and styles go. Playing 3-5. Yeah, everyone, everyone's doing it now. It's not just the style. It's the way the game is played now. That's a lot of managers. They just want players that just press and press and press all the time. It wasn't like that a lot back then. But this is what I'm saying to you about styles. Styles come and styles go. Things are not different now to what they were when Rooney was in his prime. Players used to be, they were different, mate. If you think about it, the way they're training now, all the equipment they've got and everything. Bullshit. Like that, they, they didn't have Bullshit. it back then. They Bullshit. Didn't have it back then. No, Sam Allardyce was doing all this when he was at Bolton and we're talking 20 years ago. And we had shit pitches back then. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're on carpets now, aren't they? We, I, I was You at, can't control a ball on a pitch now. and you. Uh. I was at Stockport, and before we went to the game, we was in the hotel room. Steve put a, a, a game on, and it was Wrexham from the, from the 70s. The pitch was fucking awful. Mm. Well, they played on it. Yeah. It was caught up so badly, but they played on it. Now you look at the manicured lawns and you look at your ground, Gaza, yeah. where they, they can put the ground underneath in a car park, turn it into a stadium where you can have concerts. Unbelievable. I think uh, Real Madrid are doing the same. That's where technology has moved on, other than that shit VAR. The way that the grounds are looked after now with the introduction of 4G grass and all the shit that you can use nowadays, which is acceptable. But in terms of what Rooney was doing then to what Kane was doing now, there's not much of a difference. Now, I think Rooney was like cut from like this go to war cloth when you're from the street yeah yeah, yeah 19 was, years old you're, when you're on a council estate and you're kicking a ball against a wall day in day out and you live football become a premier league or professional player there's something about you that it is like you see Rooney when he slides into those tackles in his sort of prime and when he was smacking them from miles out and stuff like that the difference again. the difference then that, pri- that prime Rooney you're talking about he was fucking 89 year old grandmas <laughs> 
He was what? He was fucking 89 year old grandma's. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, Gazza? Yeah, yes, mate, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he got found out. He used to go to whorehouses just to fuck grandmas. That's why he was in his prime. In corpses at 89. Yeah, Boy, <laughs> the on. likes of Gazza. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was doing. And having boxing matches and shit. Mm. For yeah. money. For money. With the grannies. Fox, he did it for yeah, money. Probably. He was grafting. He was a grafter. He was a grafter, I'll give you that. He, and, he, he, done, and he did that for United. Yeah, but, but he did. Yeah. Well, that wasn't in the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> what, has, he got, has he got a documentary out? Little Colleen Rooney's thing, wasn't he? he didn't oh, didn't see it. <laughs> did you see the Beckham one? Yeah. I haven't seen either. Anyway, look, lads, let's move on to the championship. Um, what have we got for the fixtures? This right, week? so Friday night match. Um, well, Turner's team. So it's Leicester nil, Leeds one. Yes. Good result. Leeds, uh, I looked at the weekend, they were second from top. They're, they're third at the moment. Are they? Yeah. Um, but they played really, really well. Um, yeah, great result at Leicester. Um, so yeah, bedded into third place now. Um, just behind Ipswich. Ipswich have got a game in hand. Yeah, well, Squid went with Ipswich this week on the Acker. I run a group that we all put a team forward to win on the week. I put 20 quid on. Squid picked fucking Ipswich. I watched, I was watching Ipswich, I was watching Aldershot, and I was watching two of us. And Ipswich just weren't at the races. Yeah. Weren't at the races. Came back two all, I think. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, next, that's the next one. Birmingham two, Ipswich two. Yeah. So that's Rooney's first point, Birmingham manager. Yeah, that's, they played all right. To be fair, Birmingham. Mm. They should have won. Ipswich were late in the day, weren't they? They kept yeah. that Eight, back right at the end. 80th minute and 89th minute. Yeah, they, yeah. they, they should have won that. I had Ipswich on my accumulator. And yeah. Yeah, they let me down. Next, we've got uh, Bristol City 1, Sheffield Wednesday nil. So I think it's both Sheffield clubs, bottom of the two leagues, aren't they? Are they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. Sheffield, from what I understand, people talking to me about the podcast, Sheffield Wednesday have got problems with their owners. Yeah. Same as uh, Everton. Yeah, they have, yeah. Yeah. Same as Reading. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. So there's lots of clubs that have got problems at the moment. Even my own beloved Grimsby, we've sacked our manager this week. We've got problems, but we've got a great. Um, well, I feel we've we've got a great board. Jason Stockwood and uh, Andrew Pettit. I think the way they're doing things is fantastic right now. Everything's with dignity. They're not doing anything behind anyone's back. Paul Hurst, that they hadn't planned on sacking him. They wanted him to get the result um, against Stockport. They wanted him to get the result at the weekend against Slough. Just never happened. Mm. Hadn't happened. So that he got sacked after the Stockport game. Uh, okay. Uh, next, um, Huddersfield nil, Watford nil. Football draw there. Um, nothing to say about that one. Um, and then we got Millwall nil, Southampton one. So the Saints have they they started coming, they're picking up points now, I think they're fourth. Um, so yeah, they're on a bit of a roll. So the three relegated clubs are all up there again. Um, Leicester, Leeds and Southampton. Then we go on to uh, Plymouth three, Middlesbrough three. Really weird because Middlesbrough started really badly in the bottom three, weren't they, at the start of the season? And then yeah. They got right the way up into the playoffs, and then I think they only picked up one or two points from the last couple of games. So Preston three, Coventry two, Rotherham one, QPR one. The QPR struggling. They sacked their manager, didn't they, as well? Gareth Ainsworth, Dix Wickham. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. Um, I wrongly said that Grimsby sacked their manager after playing Stockport it wasn't we lost 1-0 against Doncaster when we should have been winning they sacked him just after that oh okay he was sacked really I think 6 o'clock we lost 1-0 yes um, carry on Gaza okay then we got another 0-0 Stoke and Cardiff and Swansea and Sunderland so that's 3 0 nils the weekend in the championship and the last game West Brom 3 Hull 1 I think that puts West Brom up in the top six as well. Leicester are top on 39. Ipswich is second on 35. Ipswich are playing now. Um, they've got a game. Yeah, that's their game in hand then, I guess. Who are they playing? I don't know. It says near one, but I don't know who they're playing. Rotherham. Oh, oh Rotherham will one nil up against Ipswich. Ooh. Wow. What's happened to Ipswich? They're just dropping off, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, they're four points adrift, but this is their game in hand, so they lose that. Then yeah. Kieran McKenna is their uh, manager. Hmm. You got Dane Scarlett on loan there as well. Who? Dane Scarlett, young Tottenham striker. 
<laughs> Never heard of him. Like that Harry Kane. <laughs> he's, he's the next Harry Kane, apparently. Yeah, I believe it. I want to see it. Anyway, Harry Kane used to play for Leeds United as well. A little bit of useless information there. Yeah, he, went to, he went to Leicester on loan, never scored a goal for them, and then he scored more goals against Leicester in the Premier League than the other club. So they, they, don't, they don't like him either. Penalties, Gaza. No, only one. Mm. Um, anyway, the league table, Leicester 39, Ipswich 35, Leeds 28, Southampton 27, West Brom 26 and Preston 25. And at the bottom, you've got fourth bottom, Huddersfield 15, Rotherham on 10, QPR 9 and Shepherd Wednesday at the bottom with 6. That, that table there is, that's crazy that table. Yeah. Queen's Park Rangers should not be at the bottom. Or second from bottom, should I say. Rotherham, like a yo-yo team. One minute they're winning, the next minute they're losing. Um, 13 points, 15 games played. Huddersfield, again, shouldn't be at the, at the bottom end of the table. Plymouth did fantastic last year. And some of the results they've had this year. Won four, drawn four, and lost seven. Millwall, I never talk to Millwall on an acker because I never know what they're going to do. Norwich, mid-table. Watford, mid-table. Birmingham, mid-table. Swansea, mid-table. Stoke, mid-table. Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough, 12th. Mm. After losing six games, 12th. Um, they've done well. Won six. Drawn three, lost six. Yeah, I think they lost six and they won six and then drawn three or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems to be uh, cl- the club struggled to find any continuity. Yeah. Uh, Leeds, third from bottom, like you said, Gaza. Um, I quite fancy them. Mm. Quite fancy them to be in the playoffs. Mm. Go on then, next one. Where's the FA Cup after that? Fuck the FA Cup. Grimsby played Slough. Uh, Slough have got a 3G pitch. Grimsby went 1 0 down uh, from a free kick. It was. Piss poor. When I was at Stockport with uh, Stevie Pexman and my son. Sam, shout out to Sam. Grimsby in the first half went 3-0 down. I've never seen a team play so badly, get beat to every ball, misplaced passes. It was just extraordinarily bad. I was at hospitality as well. We, uh, we were sat on a table with Stockport fans. Even they were just, well, this is a piece of piss. Going to take the candy from the kid. Came in at 2-1. And we went out, pegged it back to two all. And then in the dying minutes, it would end up being three two. But the contrast between the two halves should never be like that. Professional footballers playing that bad, getting a wage and not doing the jobs that they're meant to do. It was juvenile the way that they played. Now, when they played Slough, 3G pitch, complete bollocks. These professionals couldn't get to grips with the pitch, stickiness of the pitch, the way that the ball played or didn't play, the fact that it was all playing in trains, whatever. They couldn't manufacture a fucking pass and Slough went one up. Disgraceful, fucking disgraceful. Second half again, um, for our goal scorer to, to, to put us into a replay should never have been like that we sacked to Paul Hurst and we should have kicked on should be kicking on and performances like that just poor but this is what you get when you support a team like Grimsby unfortunately was it, was it Danny Rose that scored yeah it was horrific people was texting me that was at the game saying how's the game coming across on TV awful <laughs> it was awful but in the second half got to say, I did say to everyone who was texting we are going to score because you could see that a goal was going to come because kind of like it all clicked together oh yeah this is what we've got to do because we're on a 3G pitch bullshit should have just been the basics they didn't do the basics right same as Stockport didn't do the fucking basic fundamental things passing the ball to feet controlling the ball just passing it into space but it is what it is replaying six days at Bundle Park and then whoever wins that one away to Oxford United yeah it was it was grass when I last played at Slough many many years ago um, but you're talking about FA Cups I watched it <laughs> Swindon all the shot obviously Swindon in Div 2 all the shot in the conference and after nine minutes, all the shot are 3-0 up. You think? Yeah, that was an amazing game. Yeah, right? and, you know, at one point they were 7-0 up and they're the only non-league side to score seven goals against um, a professional team. 7-4 at end of one, Yeah, 7-4, yeah. Yeah, Swindon, Swindon got four in the last sort of 15 minutes. But, yeah, but 
with the authority, so it's already done and dusted by them. And they got Stockport at home in the next round, they were top of the league. Stockport, I'll do them. Mm. I might go to that actually, I might just pop over the old wreck and have a look. You are listening to the Morning Kickoff Footy Podcast. No bullshit, no bollocks, no fucking idea. Our podcast, and as you may have all realised by now, it, we've got a change in the lineup. Other than me and Gaza, and Gaza is the obviously the world's oldest podcaster we dig up every week to do this. We have got Ollie and Sorin with us, and this is how it's going to continue. Podcast with four people, so we can all bounce off each other, and it's a different kind of energy rather than trying to do it over a phone and where people can't always get to where we do the recording of the podcast. This is a more stable environment where Ollie can make it and Sorin can make it. Me and Gaz are always going to do it anyway. And as a reservist, we have the great and wonderful Paul Sterling, who's a, a soldier and can't always get to it, but is someone that we've got in reserve. He also is a Spurs supporter, just like Gaza. And his tagline is, eating is cheating. Yes, eating <laughs> is cheating. Well, his, his other tagline is, I have two things in life. One is my word, second is my balls, and I won't break them for anyone. Out of the Godfather, allegedly. Something like that. I might be wrong, but that's what Paul says. So, as a podcast, we are a really good podcast. Uh, and how do I know this? <laughs> we get charted. The episodes go into the Apple UK podcast charts. I, I just want to give you an idea of where we reach. Obviously, England is um, 83.62% of our audience but we actually go to United States go to Sweden go to Canada go to Dominican Republic we go to Spain we go to Jamaica Egypt Romania yes baby yes we got the Romanians over there (laughs) Austria Ireland Jersey and the Philippines everyone who's listened all around the world from me and the guys so Turner Squid Joel Gaza Sorin and Ollie and myself thank you very much thank you very much thank you thank you thank you and to all the people who stopped me in the street and stopped me at work and all the rest of it to ask when the podcast was coming back we are now back it's just been a very very difficult four weeks um i've had a a few people that have died and when I say a few more than three people in the last four weeks have died so it's been really difficult also I lost a load of audio so where we tried to do episode eight and nine didn't work out then me and Gaza did episode ten that audio never worked out and we had some producers and editors who were going to do the editing that also never worked out so it's been a bit of a pain in the ass but we are now back so thank you very much to everyone who's listening and downloading this if you haven't given you a shout out this is especially for you Go on then, what are we going on to next? Well, just, uh, just before we, we well, on, the, on the referee thing, now I read something, <laughs> it was a couple of weeks ago now, but um, a German female referee gave a red card to a Turkish player called Karim Demir- Demirve. The player told her, you should stick to the kitchen. So the referee wrote that in her report and FIFA suspended him for five matches and a part of his suspension, he has to officiate one woman football match. I thought that was quite... <laughs> well, that was uh, interesting. Yeah. It's another true story. Are we going to go on to the fixtures this week? Yeah, do you want to do some predictions, yeah? Yep. Let's start with... Wolves Tottenham, lunchtime kickoff. Oh, I fucking hate lunchtimes. I really do. Wolves Tottenham. Well, I think it's going to be 3-0 for Tottenham. I'm going 0-0. I think James Madison not there for Son. They're going to have a goal threat. And I think Tottenham are going to have a little slide down the table. So I'm going in a Spurs 2-1 win. I've, I've got the same as Dino, 2-1. Second one is Arsenal Burnley. 3-0 Arsenal. He'll come back. I think the sting will be in the tail of Arsenal. Kai Havertz. Chelsea was <laughs> so lucky to get rid of him. Yeah. And to get so much money for him as well. Mm. He's a liability. Arsenal 3 0. Same, yeah. Okay. 2 1 Arsenal. 2 1? I've got a 3 1 Arsenal. Palace Everton. Well, oh, that's really interesting. That's got 0 0 written all over it. I'm going to go 2 0 Everton. Palace 1 0 for me on that one. I think it's going to be 1 1 0. Yeah, I had 1 0 as well. Uh, United Luton. Da, 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 da. 
Well, well I'll do mine. I'm going to go United 2-1. I'm going to have to agree with Ollie, although I'd be very happy if United lost. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's going to yeah. be 2-1 United. I'm going to go 3-1 United. I think United have got three goals in them. Yeah, I think Rashford might get a couple. The game that I watched in Manchester was Sheffield United and Man United. Oh, uh, yeah, that's it. It was one all. Both scored early. One was a penalty. One was Scott McTominay. And then Dalot scored in the 77th minute. Now, I watched them at one all. They laboured. And it was so disjointed. The way that they were all playing, the passing, the finishing, it was terrible. They didn't deserve to win that. 2-1. Same as when it was in the Premier League before, always losing by a goal, always losing. Got the worst Premier League record mm. for a team coming into the Premier League and they're doing exactly the same again right now. And I just think Ten Hag is not the man to lead that, that team. What's your score? You know, um, a one-all draw with Luton. One-all draw. I can see that. Next one, Bournemouth, Newcastle. Newcastle, 3-0. 4-1, Newcastle. I'm going to go 3-0 Newcastle. I'm going 2-1. Villa, Fulham. That's an interesting match. I think Fulham will... I reckon Fulham are going to lose 2-0. I think it's going to be 1-0 one, one for um, Villa. I'm going to go 3-1. I'm going to go 2-1 Villa. Brighton, Sheffield United. Brighton, that's three points for Brighton. Brigerton for me, 2-1 Brigerton. Yeah, I was going 2-1 because Sheffield ain't lose by one goal, don't they? Mm. I'm going to go 2-0 Brighton. I'm going to have to agree with Volley. I think it's going to be 2-0 two, two, yeah. Brighton. Liverpool, Brentford. That's Anything nice. could happen in that game. It's a tough know? game to call because Liverpool, you would have put them down as a 3-0 win this weekend and they were pants. So 2-2. Two, 2-1 two. Two, Liverpool, just. I'm going 2-2 two, two, Brentford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be 2-1 as well for Liverpool. 3-2 Liverpool. West Ham Forest. 2-0 West Ham. 2-2 two, two, Forest. 2-0 for West Ham. 2-1. And last one, Chelsea Man City. Play for your clubs, mate. <laughs> who are you going to, who are you rooting for? That is such a Chelsea will lose 2-0. I'm going 3-1 City. 4-0 City. I think it might be a 5-1 for City. 5-1, yeah. Right, we're going into the championship for the fixtures. Have you got them up? I, I have, yeah. yeah. So, first one is 12.30 kickoff, Sunderland and Birmingham. Birmingham is poor right now. One point from nine. Mm. Sunderland. <laughs> mid table, just above mid table. Yeah. Cardiff and Norwich, 3 pm kickoff. Coventry and Stoke, Hull and Huddersfield, Ipswich, Swansea City, Leeds and Plymouth. Fancy Leeds to do Plymouth and it's at Leeds. Bora and Leicester. Oh, that'd be a good one. I think that will be a good game. Not two all draw, something like that. QPR, Bristol City, Bristol City, 3 1 win against QPR. Chef Wednesday, Millwall. Millwall, they're a nightmare team. Never have them on an Akada. Never know what they're going to do. Always ruin me. Um, I'd say Millwall 2 1. Southampton, West Brom, both within a couple of places of each other. Probably a draw. Watford and Rotherham 2 0. Watford on that one. League Una. So 12 o'clock kickoff Peterborough and Cambridge United. Peterborough, uh, Peterborough. Peterborough for, to win that. Yeah. Blackpool at uh, Bolton at versus Blackpool. 3 pm kickoff. Bolton at home. Bookies have got it 21 to 20. Bolton and 12 to 5 away. Blackpool. Maybe Blackpool sneak a little win there, I think. Carlisle, Bristol, Rovers, 7 to 4, 7 to 5. Draw 23 to 10 as well. Cheltenham v Wigan 21 to 10. The bookies have got out Cheltenham and 6 to 5 away win Wigan. Wigan just falling out of form. They did so well to get out of the bottom. Eight point deficit. Just no form. Derby and Barnsley. Derby, I've got to win that league. I've got each way as well. Top three places. The only team that's letting me down at the minute. The only team. They just need to go up a couple of places. I fancy, I hope Derby win. Got to show support with them because they're in my promotion. Acker. Fleetwood and Exeter. Bookies have got it 6 to 5. Fleetwood and 21 to 10. Exeter. So that's, you've got to say it'd be a Fleetwood win. Orient versus Oxford. Bookies have got it as an away win. 6-4 home win 17-10 Lincoln City who I fucking hate I'm going to say they're going to lose 8-0 because I hate them <laughs> do, a, uh, do a good biscuit though yeah as we discovered Gaza <laughs> uh, versus Port Vale Port Vale are 2-1 away winners Lincoln 13-10 home Northampton versus Burton 21-20 uh, Northampton win 12-5 Burton Portsmouth top of the league versus Charlton Portsmouth 3-4 and Charlton just over 3 to one 16 to 5 
I've got a fancy that Portsmouth we yeah. Shrewsbury and Reading Reading and all kinds of shit right now 17 to 10 the away win 6 to 4 home win Shrewsbury I think you've got to take that Shrewsbury get it in your acca Wickham Wanderers versus Stevenage 13 to 10 Wickham uh, 9 to 5 away win Stevenage uh, draw for me on that one the league in league Una. Portsmouth have not lost this year Portsmouth are sitting high 35 points missed out on promotion uh, the last two seasons three seasons yeah. in the playoffs been really unlucky but looks like it could be this year is their year for promotion second with 32 points Oxford third Bolton 30 points fourth Peterborough 28 points Barnsley fifth with 27 points down at the bottom we have Northampton 14 points Carlisle 21st 14 points 22nd place Fleetwood 13 points 23rd place Reading 9 points in 24th place at the bottom Chelt and none you got to be shit if you're below Reading mm, I have indeed League 2 fixtures AFC Wimbledon and Doncaster 72 away Doncaster's you've got to have AFC Wimbledon in your acca for that as a win Bradford new manager are they going to get the bounce? I doubt it very much. Mark Hughes has ruined that team. 11 to 10, the home win, and 12 to 5, Barrow. I would say Barrow to win that just because I like the idea of them odds. Just over 2 to 1. Colchester United, Evans, they've done really well since second their manager. Home, Evans, away, 12 to 5. I would go all day long. Sutton United just, I don't know what's happened at Sutton. Gaza, do you know anything with Sutton? Shit. Shit this shit Colchester United get Colchester United in your acca we're going to do this in a minute that's going to be one Crawley right Gaza stick Colchester United down for me please for the free team acca uh, Crawley flying high in the top half uh, against Accrington and Stanley Accrington and a big Grimsby uh, 13 to 10 Crawley 7 to 4 Accrington and draw crew Notts County Notts County got to go all day long Gaza stick Notts County down as well please 2 to 1 the home win crew 11 to 10 away Notts County uh, Grimsby and Morecambe sack Paul Hurst really bad really poor really piss poor wouldn't surprise me in the least if Morecambe came and took all three points 9-4 to four away 11-10 to 10, Grimsby um, could go anyway Grimsby are just terrible at the moment 2-1 Morecambe Newport MK Dons Newport at home 15-8 away 5-4 to four, MK Dons MK Don win Salford City versus Mansfield <sighs> fucking Mansfield a good team mm. Salford City seem to have picked themselves up as well 3-1 for Salford Alford and three to four odds on Mansfield. Got to go Mansfield on that. Gaza, let's do Mansfield on that, please. So we've got three for the Acker, for the uh, treble. Swindon and Stockport County. Away, Evens, home, 23 at 10, Swindon. Can they fight back from an embarrassing uh, FA Cup game? I doubt it. Uh, Stockport all day long win on that one. Tranmere Rovers versus Forest Green. Eight to five, Tranmere Rovers. 29 to 20, Forest Green. You've got to say Tranmere and do that Walsall versus Harrogate Town 10 to 11 Walsall 13 to 5 Harrogate Town probably a draw Wrexham and Gillingham Gillingham set the manager off the rails 8 to 11 uh, odds on Wrexham 16 to 5 Gillingham Gillingham can play as can Wrexham Wrexham is second in the league right now third I think in the third I think so I think it's uh, Stockport uh, Notts County, County and then Wrexham yeah. yeah Notts County and Wrexham on the same points uh, 38 Stockport top 35 fourth in the league Mansfield Town with 29 points fifth crew with 29 points and at the bottom Sutton 10 points at the bottom Tranmere 10 points second from bottom Forest Green Rovers third from bottom 13 points Grimsby 21st with 14 points and 20th Colchester 17 points also second manager quite a few second there manager in the two and that is the roundup of all the fixtures for the coming weekend I tell you what is happening right now Everton and Spurs are trying to renegotiate the terms of Dilly Dally Silly Alley's oh yeah contract yeah what's so that Addison no Dilly Dally Silly Alley Dilly Alley oh, Dilly Alley yeah, yeah. What that? what's else happening well if like he that. played another game for Everton they'd have to pay 11 million pounds is that right yeah to Spurs <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're trying to refigure it out that he can come back 
uh, be in, reintegrated with Sean Dyche's first team, but without the £11 million penalty, because they'll have to sell him. Yeah. Can you imagine paying £11 million for a Dele Alli? No, this is on top. This is on top of what they've already paid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, just, they, is they that why they're not playing him? Because they don't want to give him another. They don't want to give him another eleven million. So yeah. just that's why he went out to Beskitas. Is it Beskitas? Yeah. They've actually Beskitas. He went. Like, he went there, didn't he? He's been injured, hasn't he? This, they pay it if he was worth it. But he's, he's, he was. He's, he was unbelievable, Delhi Alley that we all knew. Yeah, I think that was about five years ago, wasn't it? He was unbelievable. Yeah, he came out and with all that stuff that he had and abuse and mm. things. I mean, there's a player in there somewhere, but whether anybody can get it out. Maybe he should come back to Ange. Maybe Ange could get him playing. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Um, I've just got to say now that the new Grimsby Town manager, who's been slashed to evens, is David Healy, who's currently the manager of Irish team Linfield. Healy has enjoyed a mightily successful eight years in charge. Linfield winning the Premiership title on five occasions and his side have already opened up an eight point gap at the top of this campaign. He has also led the Blues to two Irish Cup crowns and two Bet McLean League Cups including last season's final triumph over Coleraine at Windsor Park while winning 266 of 420 matches across all competitions but it's not EFL and it's not Div 2 and it certainly ain't Vanarama so I can't think he would be a good fit but they've slashed his odds from 6 yes. to 1 to evens Northern Irish former professional footballer anyone that's like a manager going into League 2 is unless you're Phil Parkinson pretty unknown right you, you, you're given an opportunity to prove yourself but you're not like coming from superstar what, stuff what about one of your old lads Sol Campbell where's he, where's he at <laughs> I don't think he's managing anymore is he Mm-hmm. Bitched, bitched and bitched and bitched. Yeah. I think he was manager of Mansfield at one stage. Wanted to be England manager, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, Did he? why am I not England coach? Why am I not why am I not with the under 18s? Why am I not with the under 23s? Yeah. Whatever, whatever, whatever. It's bollocks. Absolute fucking bollocks. Mm-hmm. We're gonna do a ten pound bet for charity and it's a, a treble. And the three teams are what uh, I have picked from Div 2 we're going to put £10 on uh, if it wins we're going to put that into a bank and then by the end of the year whatever we get in uh, money in winnings we're then going to turn it over to charity I'm probably going to do it to Andy's Man Andy's Man Club yeah it is, isn't it? Andy's Man Club. We're going to do it to Andy's Man Club, which is also the charity that Treebor's family have chosen as well. And also, there's a Just Giving page for Treebor, which myself and Stephen Pexman have donated £100 to. I think the total one I last saw it was 560 quid. You can you can give to Treebor's Just Giving page, which is also being given to Andy's Man Club. There you go. So it only leaves me now to thank the guys, Gaza, Sorin and Holly, and to wish you all a fantastic week. And we will all see you on the next episode, which will be episode nine next week. So goodbye from me. Goodbye from you guys. Can say goodbye, guys. Bye, guys. guys. See you later. Bye, guys. That's it. Literally say goodbye, guys. You fucking pricks. <laughs> see you all next week. Ta-da. Hello, motherfuckers. Not is that. This episode has just ended. But we know you'll be back to listen to more conversations. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any episode. Thank you for listening. Oh, that's a wrap. I took a sleeping tablet at six and I've had nothing to eat today, right? I was struggling like fuck towards the end of that. Go on, then. This person keeps ringing you about five times. I don't know if it's important. It's going to be that hooker, isn't it? <laughs> Sorin's got a hooker friend. <laughs> like proper under the bed dark as well you know yeah, what I mean be just, like yeah, dark dark you couldn't see your hand in front of your face exactly until you just see some you just hear a tray just slide in under the door like a
prison cell. <laughs> well, I, I do that every night until Dean digs me out. That's true. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> Gary's an expert. That's how Gary gets to sleep at night, isn't it, Gary? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All the maggots and that tapping on the, the <laughs> coffin, <laughs> tapping my head. Right. Peace. And here's what's coming up on today's show. That was shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you yeah, remember the game? Still. It's like as soon as the whistle goes, everything's forgotten. And you're like, well, no, good. five minutes ago, you're not going to kill me. You're calling me a cunt. So. <laughs> well, you are one to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was fair. Come on. It's already Do you know the to Albanian mouth. national anthem? <laughs> How do I know that? I barely remember the Romanian one. What's, I know what it's what's called. The, what's the Romanian national anthem? Do you want me to sing it yeah. or tell you? Yeah, sing it. We've had, oh, no. we've had this before, haven't we? we Did we talk about this before? Have you, you, have, have okay. you sung it before? Yeah, when I was a kid. Well, we, sing, it, we, sing it now. What are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> That's a Romanian national anthem. <laughs> yeah. It sounds I'm trying sad, to do the it? levels. <laughs> yeah, well, there you are. Come Go on, on then, keep singing. Have that at the beginning of the podcast, do <laughs> Can you imagine how many people would turn off for no, no. that? We, we need to do the Albanian one. And then it's just Soren signing in. One, two, one, two. Just do Premier League. Let's just do Premier League. Start, yeah, we can always change it, can't we? It keeps yeah. it easier for us then, just mm. doing the Premier League. Yeah. Bit on my face. Um, then I'm going to go to the FA Cup. So what team are you supporting right now? City. City, the top in there, obviously. The fucking Stupid the top, question. Um, I still support Spurs, by the way, if you will. Uh, it says so it on you your headphones. I don't need to fuck it out. Oh, what, what team do you support? Arsenal. 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 You didn't get shit on. Oh, fuck me. Yeah, you did. So, Ollie can speak about Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate them. Yes, most people do. As much as they hate us, but... Yeah. Probably... A treble acker. Now 12 went out a killer this weekend. I don't know why you lot play that game. It's shit. I'm still in it. Are you? But when got back You're the one lot. who fucking invited us. <laughs> I was the first one out. <laughs> I went out week fucking three or week four. Oh, fucking shit. Fucking shit. Has Joel, Joel got two lives still? No, he's out, I think. Gaza, you're knocking the table. Sorry. What that, was that? That was fucking not air freshener. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, I ate them. The fucking everywhere. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Yeah, don't. You, you're kicking the table and it's coming through. <clears throat> My Twitch. <laughs> yeah. That's because you keep me underground too fucking long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 